ruler of Dubai abolishes decision on cutting social aid. Typhoon Nalgay slams the northern Philippines. And Tonga stunned France with a historic victory. This is Seven National News. In our top story this evening, UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has ordered the termination of a decision that was earlier made to cut aid by the Ministry of Social Affairs. The ruler has also ordered the setup of a committee to investigate a request that was sent to the ministry by Mohammed Hassan Al Abdulli. According to Emirates news agency WAM, the committee will be chaired by the president of the state audit institution, Dr. Harib Al-Amimi, and a report will be issued by the end of the week. In the run-up to Mental Health Day on the 10th of October, the Dubai Health Authority is launching an awareness campaign to educate the public. The initiative is being organised by the Rashid Hospital Psychiatry Section under the name The Great Push Investing in Mental Health to also highlight the importance of detection in a bid to prevent patients from facing further deterioration. Dr Alia al Mari, head of the psychiatry department at Rashid Hospital, stated that mental health facilities in the Emirate must be more closely looked at. He added that the stigma that surrounds the disease is also still an issue, not just in the UAE but globally, and that society and healthcare professionals must work together to combat the problem. As a part of the initiative, the campaign will be held on the 7th of October at the Arabian Centre ahead of World Mental Health Day, where doctors will be on hand to answer questions. We are holding it since three years, such event, and we are like to have it regularly because we got a benefit from that. And this time, we have three goal important. We are focusing on it. Number one, to have the psychiatric part of the children and uh, grown up. Number two, to have to arrange sort of uh, visiting at home, which is home service, that the psychiatric service at home. Which is also this is a new task, which is we are responsible for that. Number three, to have the consultation of the inpatient available. It's not necessary to be the patient of belong to the psychiatric department. No, beside the patient available in the uh, inpatient or even as a neighborhood area. A Dubai-based company specializing in auto parts is spreading awareness about the dangers of using fake items. According to UK's Institute for Trading Standards, the global counterfeit car parts industry is worth at least 18 billion dirhams. While the practice of selling illegal car parts in the UAE may not be so high in comparison to other countries, industry insi insiders are still concerned. Khadija Sali has this report. On Dubai's roads, it is common to see all types of vehicles, from the expensive to the inexpensive models. However, that's simply the shell we normally see. According to experts, the inside of one's car is even more important than how it looks outside. A recent study by the Brand Owners Protection Group suggested that car parts could account for 69% of all fake goods in the UAE. This is what we are trying to do, is educating people of whether what they want to, what they're choosing. If they're, if they're saving, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say, a couple of hundred dirhams on a brake change uh, and going for a cheaper option or a fake option, what they're risking is something much more or much higher, uh, with much higher consequences. Uh, life being one, like I said earlier, but the other thing is also, um, uh, you know, the performance of the other parts of the car. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, the breakup of a vehicle, uh, each part depends on the other part to work uh, simultaneously for the whole uh, vehicle to be running smoothly. Now, if you have um, a bunch of good parts and a bunch of bad parts working together, definitely the good parts also get, get affected. According to a report, the Dubai Customs saw an increase in counterfeit items by 75% compared to 2009. While there are stringent laws in the Emirate for the sale of fake items, AMAP says it continues to be a lucrative business due to the increasing supply from countries such as India and China. It is being a little difficult for the government authorities in those countries to, to, uh, uh, to come down on such, uh, uh, such factors. But yes, it is something that they're not ignoring. Uh, we know for a fact that um, in, in most of the places that we do travel, China is actively 
um, uh, uh, pushing its role to, of making sure that they do educate people, they do take part in exhibitions where they have special stands in, in telling people not to uh, go for fake products and not to uh, fall for such uh, such risky items. Well, uh, government bodies over here locally are very uh, serious when it comes to uh, fake products, uh, especially uh, again because of the the risk it brings along with it. Um, we are not working directly or indirectly with anyone, but um, um, of course the economic department, the customs, they are also actively approaching and working with companies like us who are uh, taking this matter seriously. So yeah, in some way or the other, the partnership is there. Experts added that while it is a common practice for some to opt for counterfeit items, such as oil filters and brake pads to save a couple of hundred dirhams, many residents are increasingly choosing quality and safety nowadays. Well, when I'm choosing a car part for my car, it's very important that I look, uh, think about the safety aspect because uh, mostly my wife is driving her own car and I'm driving my own car. But um, looking at the harsh temperatures in the UAE, uh, it's very important that my tires, my car battery, my brake pads are of a certain quality, which I don't mind paying an extra 100 or 200 dirhams compared to other cheaper brands in the market because at the end of the day, safety is the number one priority, whether I'm driving it or my family's driving it or anybody else is driving it. In the end, this is just one of the many initiatives being rolled out to increase safety on the roads and save lives. While it is essential to save every dirham, experts say it is not worth to turn your dream car into a death trap by going on the cheap. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. Around 200 retail units are up for rent at Dubai metro stations, according to the Roads and Transport Authority. An RTA statement revealed that the authority is offering 116 retail outlets on the Red Line stations and 79 on the Green Line, which officials say have unique business opportunities. They added that the units could be used for anything from restaurants and cafes to flower shops and electronics. They also say that the units are expected to attract a host of international brands, which they hope will boost an existing partnership between the RTA and the private sector. Since its launch back in September 2009, 84.2 million passengers have used the metro to date. Abu Dhabi police impounded 46 vehicles in the capital and in Alain within a week of launching a new initiative. A campaign was launched to catch drivers with expired registration with the, aim, with the main aim to promote road safety. Vehicle inspections including monitoring to ensure motor cars are fully up to date with operational standards. The campaign is focusing on all roads between Abu Dhabi, Al Gharbiya and Alain. Looking to news abroad now, the Bulacan province geared up for more flooding as Typhoon Nalge swept past the northern Philippines today. Typhoon Nalge packed winds of up to 160 kilometers per hour, slammed into coastal areas, bringing the risk of landslides and flash floods and killing at least one person. Residents are still reeling from the impact of previous Typhoon Nasat and have evacuated to higher ground as Nalge is expected to further swell rivers and fill up dams. Meanwhile, rescue operations have been going on since floods rose on Thursday, but many are still trapped on their rooftops while food and water were running short. Tropical Storm Risk, which monitors storms worldwide, said Nalga was a Category 4 typhoon. The National Disaster Agency said the death toll from Typhoon Nasat had risen to 50, with 31 people still missing. The damage bill for the earlier storm stood at $137 million. The Royal Free Hospital in London has begun to perform a new form of experimental breast cancer treatment that makes drugs 8,000 times more effective. Electrochemotherapy targets tumor tissue with an electric field, rendering cancer cells more receptive to cancer-killing drugs. And doctors say the treatment kills breast cancer within days. During the treatment, a common anti-cancer drug is given to the patient. Once the drug has spread to the cancer, medics apply the electrical pulse, which doctors at the hospital say dramatically enhances the effectiveness of the drug. The Royal Free Hospital states that studies have shown 79 to 85% of patients benefit from the half an hour treatment, which has fewer side effects than conventional therapy. Electrochemotherapy is also used to treat skin cancer. The effectiveness of the treatment is still, however, under research. Up next, we have the day's business news for you, so stay with us.